In late April and early May of this year, I had the chance to go overseas to Germany for a training exercise with the Air Force. During some downtime, I had the opportunity to visit the city of Nuremberg and the Transportation Museum located in the center of town. This video chronicles my brief visit to the Nuremberg Transportation Museum. As we go through the museum, I'll do my best to keep the narration at a minimum, but I will point out various items of interest along the way. Like any good museum about railways, this one takes us right back to the beginning. And one of the first pieces of interest is this 1820s coal wagon, on loan from the National Railway Museum in York, England. Of course, England is where the railways got their start, and the rest of the world would follow their lead. De Adler, translated to The Eagle, is the locomotive that kick-started Germany's railway revolution. Built in 1835 by Robert Stevenson and Company of Newcastle, England, it was delivered to the Bavarian Ludwig Railway in December of 1835 and began hauling passengers between Nuremberg and Forth. After a venerable 22-year career, Der Adler was sadly sold for scrap in 1858. Thankfully, the locomotive's legacy has not been forgotten, as two replicas have since been constructed, one of which is currently operational on special occasions. Below the larger scale model of Adler we have just seen are various items of Adler-related memorabilia, ranging from small-scale models to sheet metal cutouts, mugs, and fine china. Various small and large-scale models throughout the museum depict life on the railway and how the railway functions, as well as the progression of motive power and rolling stock. One of the most interesting coach models was this one. Perhaps this was an early form of electric traction on German railways. If so, it helped to pave the way for the modern trains we see today. Across from that model is a small racetrack set up between a superheated engine, seen on the top, and a saturated engine, seen on the bottom. Let's see that again. That was too quick. For anyone fascinated with machinery in motion, or just a curiosity of how things work, this cutaway model of a steam locomotive's valve gear is pure eye candy. With the push of a button, the motion comes to life. As beautiful as the models are though, they pale in comparison to these crown jewels. These are the royal coaches of King Ludwig II 
and Chancellor Otto von Bismarck. When you take a look at the plush interiors of these pieces of rolling stock, you'll be left without doubt that the rulers of Germany rode the rails in pure style. Across from the Royal Coaches is one of the museum's most prized steam locomotives, the Bavarian Class S26. This 444 Jubilee type engine was built by Maffei in Munich in 1906. Designed for fast express passenger service, it once achieved a speed record of 96 miles per hour, which wasn't beaten until the 1930s. The tall red driving wheels hint at the Class S26's passenger pedigree. Besides having large driving wheels, the other advantage the Class S26 had was its use of compounding. Compounding allowed steam from the boiler to be used twice, first at high pressure and then as it expanded at lower pressure before being exhausted through the smokestack. Though recycling the system had its benefits, superheating would eventually make compounding all but obsolete. This engine would eventually be superseded by the Class S36-462 Pacific type engines, which were basically this type of locomotive but with an extra driving axle. Retired from service in 1925, the engine was donated to the Munich Transportation Museum before being transferred to Nuremberg. Towards the back end of the line the Class S26 is on is Nordgau, another Maffei-built locomotive from 1853. Uh-oh. Where's the rest of it? The rest of Nordgau is not present, as it was sectioned lengthwise in 1925 at the Munich workshops, in order to provide a visual diagram of how a steam locomotive operates. Towards the back of the rolling stock hall is this beautiful promotional mock-up of ICE-3, the latest generation of Deutsche Bahn's high-speed passenger trains. And directly across from it is the non-operating replica of Adler, which was built in the 1950s. I was sadly not able to visit every section of the Nuremberg Transportation Museum during my visit. The section that chronicled the railways following World War II and into the modern era was under refurbishment during the time of my visit. Regardless, I enjoyed my brief time at the Nuremberg Transportation Museum. It's a wonderful institution that chronicles the history of Germany's railways and how they shaped the country. If I get stationed in Germany in the not-too-distant future, 
Who knows? I might have to give this place a second look. As I conclude this program, I want to give special thanks to Master Sergeant Silva, who was one of the many supervisors during my training exercise. She graciously arranged and provided transportation to and from Nuremberg, which helped to make this video possible. Thanks again, Master Sergeant Silva. Hope all is well in Germany. As for the rest of my fellow viewers out there, I would like to wish you Gute Nacht and Auf Wiedersehen.